Alex Paul, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, um, we're going to talk about how do chronographs work. You know, a chronograph is a watch with a stopwatch function, and uh, not to be confused with chronometer, a chronograph is not a chronometer, and a chronometer is not a chronograph. Uh, a chronometer is a watch that's just very accurate. Uh, the Swiss COSC standard for uh, a chronograph is plus six seconds minus four seconds a day. Um, this one doesn't meet that. This is a vintage uh, chronograph, which is not a chronometer, but it is a stopwatch function complication. So let's turn the camera around and we'll go through some of the other chronographs in the collection and explain how each type of chronograph works. Let's talk about chronographs. As I said, um, a chronograph is a watch with a stopwatch function and a chronometer is just an accurate watch. So you can have a good chronograph that's not a chronometer. For example, this um, 70s era nondescript manufacturer um, using off-the-shelf uh, parts to make their watch, which was very common in the day. Um, it's got a, probably a value uh, 73 in it. I'll double check when we uh, open it up and do a show on this watch as its own star uh, downstream. But for now, we'll just uh, use this as our basic chronograph uh, example. Now, just to refresh people's memory as to what a stopwatch is, a stopwatch is just a... Uh, device that lets you time things, right? So uh, this is a 10 second stopwatch, which is actually like um, the uh, Zenith El Primero stopwatch, which is inside the watch, if you think about it, which is quite impressive. Um, and a chronograph is a wristwatch that has a stopwatch function in it. So let's um, take a close look at this one and we can talk about some of the basics, okay? And talk about some of the basics involved in a chrono. Now, uh, here you see you've got the running seconds, and the reason the running seconds is in a subdial is because we need the uh, main second hand to be used as a uh, chronograph, stopwatch second hand. Now, this one here is also color-coded, you see, so you know that this red dial goes with the red second hand. This is, must be the minute totalizer, which is in its own subdial. And then some chronographs have a third subdial for hours. And depending on the complications, they might have dials for other functions, for example, um, let's zoom out again. So in other words, um, you could just have the chrono functions, or for example, in this case, you see it's also got a triple date and moon phase complication built into it. You can have chronographs that have all kinds of complications built in on top, depending on uh, the manufacturer, the movement and such. This movement that's in this Longines is a modified Valjoux 7750, I'm sorry, 7751, the uh, calendar version of it. And um, the, it, this is modified heavily, in my opinion, heavily because it's no longer a a um, cam operated chronograph it is a column wheel chronograph and i'll explain a little bit of that difference in a second because i've got uh, other examples of both cam and uh, column wheel but you see that uh, little blue gear shaped thing that is the column wheel so um essentially a chronograph is a stopwatch function, and they could be other functionalities on top of it, but the primary function of a chronograph is to, uh, well, actually, the chronograph complication in all of these watches is the stopwatch function. So let's uh, do a basic uh, functionality check on a basic chronograph, and uh, recenter this a little bit. And so you push the uh, start stop button. Now, uh, a lot of uh, chronographs used to be mono pushers like a uh, stopwatch. And um, I believe it was Breitling that came up with the first twin pusher because it's more convenient to just, uh, you know, you don't have to think about how many times did I push this button. You push the top to start and stop and you push the bottom to reset. So that way also, if you wanted to do, say, for example, um, continuous times, you could then hit the button and it would continue to go. Whereas in a mono pusher, um, you couldn't do that, it would reset on you. So, stop and reset. 
Okay, and I'm looking forward to looking inside of this because uh, it actually feels pretty crisp, and it's got it's got to be a cam inside, but um, it must be in really good shape because it does feel nice and crisp. So now, beyond a basic chronograph, there are two uh, primary alternative functions that you will see often in chronographs, and that is um, flyback and uh, twin or split second or double. Uh, chronograph. Now, uh, one other thing about the totalizer. Let's do, let's swap out watches and look at another. Uh, so here, let's take a look at um, this one for example. Uh, this Zenith El Primero is a uh, high beat chrono, and here they uh, did something interesting with the uh, free running minute. Uh, I mean, second hand. It's actually part of the open heart escapement. So you see it has three hands, so it can track on the inner side of the uh, opening and still give you a second timing function. But as you see, it's three hands so that it can, each can track that arc. So you have a continuous second readout. So you have running seconds here as part of the open heart. And then you've got the hour and minute totalizers here. This is also a column wheel movement. Um, so I, I, I think more modern column wheels, they go out of their way to make themselves visibly column wheel. Um, this older one, you have to really look to see the column wheel. It's not, you know, that much in your face. Some companies actually will blue it or uh, paint it red to make it stand out. But in this case, the column wheel is over here. All right. So... Um, the difference between a column wheel chronograph and a cam operated chronograph is that the um, column wheel chronograph, because it's got those gears, it can more cleanly make the changes between settings. You know, instead of the cam pushing on an elongated uh, curve on a wheel, uh, the, t the toothed gear makes more positive stops as it were so um this is the walkman triple date i mean not, not triple date um this is a walkman flyback i had a video on a walkman triple date i must have uh, freudian channeled the title of that video just now because um there is a uh, walkman triple date video in my archive now this is a flyback and this flyback was made in the 70s and this is um a movement that they kind of uh went an inexpensive way for a flyback. So the um, hour and minute totalizers are reset from a separate button than the chrono. See, so let's start it. You could feel the cam in this one. It just pushes. You could feel you're pushing against some rounded objects in there. Uh, but see, so now as it runs, we could push this button now and get flyback. So you see, a flyback chronograph is just a chronograph that can do instant resets. So for example, um, if you're timing racing, you can then more easily uh, track multiple events or uh, horse racing or, well, any kind of racing actually, or any event where you're, uh, you have the need to quickly reset and yet keep timing. An event. So flyback you'll see is a little bit more commonplace than um, a split second or a uh, double chronograph, but these are also uh, not the easiest mechanisms to manufacture as evidenced by the fact that this flyback has got uh, three pushers, not two. Now, uh, all modern flybacks d don't need this extra button and they will all reset on the fly from the uh, reset button. And then just like a regular chronograph, it resets normally. You do have to push the second uh, pusher to, uh, or I should say the third pusher in this case, to reset the uh, hour and minute totalizers. But all in all, that's a way you can uh, have a flyback function without um, breaking the bank as a watch manufacturer. Now, of course, since this watch is... Uh, Vintage, it's no longer considered a cheap alternative. It's now considered a quaint vintage uh, flyback chronograph. Now, let's go to um, a little bit more interesting function, and that is the double chronograph, the uh, split-second functionality. And um, 
I was uh, going to show it to you on a stopwatch originally because I didn't have a double chronograph in the collection. I just acquired this um, Omega double chronograph. But I, have, I'm, I picked up this double chronograph, this uh, split-second uh, stopwatch, just to show everybody what one looked like in case I didn't have one to physically show. And I'll show you on this because this is interesting because this is from a time when people still use decimal minutes. So this was hundredths. It still ran 60 seconds around the dial, but then you could read the time off expressed in hundredths of a minute. So um, see, it just goes off as a regular stopwatch. And then a split second will have a second pusher so that you can then stop the movement of the second, second hand, you see? And um, then it catches back up again. If you notice, there was a little bit of a bounce because it follows a cam so that it knows where the uh, main second hand is and can catch up to it at any point. In fact, the term rattrapante, which is the term, French term used for double chronographs, or, or the Germans say double chronograph, and the Americans say split second, um, but rattrapante simply means to catch up. So let's see how that functionality works on this uh, Omega. Now, this is based on a 7750. IWC also makes a double chronograph based on um, the Valjoux 7750. Their mechanism was developed by Habring, in fact, uh, of the famous Habring micro brand, high-end micro brand, um, he designed the uh, double chronograph functionality in the uh, IWC double chronograph. I unfortunately do not know who designed the functionality. It's not the same. I believe this is modular based. Um, it's not the same kind of a double clutch uh, pincer mechanism that the IWC uses, but it is still a nice split second watch. So there we go with the split second running, right? And then we push the uh, split, see the second hand come off, catches up again. Notice the bounce as it follows. See, so this one actually should use, uh, could use of service. I just got it. I think I'm going to take it in and have it, everything tightened up because that's a lot of lash in that uh, split second hand. But if you see, it stops. You can continue this timing and then it catches up, and then you stop and reset the whole works. And if you notice, the uh, second hand did the, the second second hand did that bounce because it's riding this cam following the uh, primary second hand. So a uh, split second double chronograph is very useful. It's probably the most useful when you're actually timing real racing events because you can do splits now and can time more than one item moving simultaneously. So, uh, actually, I almost forgot. Let me show you. The, this is another example of a nice uh, chrono. This is the uh, Tag Heuer Carrera 2. This is an in-house chronograph movement. And um, if you'll notice on this one, let's zoom in a little more. It's got its running seconds uh, down below. And then the totalizers to the left and right, which they also then used in the way that they set up the uh, face design. And this is also, uh, let's zoom out a little bit before I flip it over. And this is also, <clears throat> and this is also a column wheel chronograph. I have a video on this piece as well. Actually, I have a video on almost every single piece that's sitting here. Um, but as you see, this is also a very nice piece. And it also has a column wheel. In this case, they painted it red. You see it? It's up there in the top. But uh, they painted the column wheel red so you would notice it. You can see that little red pop out there. And so, um, like I said, a column wheel allows you for a cleaner, more precise stop and start, tighter travel on the pushers, and everything operates very crisply. <clears throat> So, 
that was uh, how chronographs work. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about chronographs or any information you'd like to know, uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any questions you have. But um, chronographs are fun. Too many people don't use the chronographs that are already in their watches. You could use them for timing cooking. You could use it for timing anything, frankly. Um, but chronographs are a cool complication. Use the one if you have one. If you don't, every collection should have at least one chronograph. And <clears throat> if pricing is intimidating, get yourself a vintage chronograph. You could pick up a good vintage chronograph with a value movement in it, manually wound for 300 bucks or less, depending on what you look for and um, how you find it. So that was chronographs. Have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for uh, taking the time and let's uh, turn the camera around and close out the episode. So that's how chronographs work. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And uh, please, if you liked it, subscribe and click the like button. It really does help. Thanks.